right. Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Hermy Smith, yes, and I've been with City Team for 22 years. And I had a front row seat to see how God uses ordinary people to really accomplish extraordinary things. And I really believe that the kingdom of God, you know, is, uh, and the church is really the gift to really uh, bless and transform our city. So our mission statement is to show and share Christ's unconditional and redemptive love by caring for immediate needs and enabling lasting solutions. And that is, we just can't do that by ourselves. We need to have kingdom collaboration to accomplish and, 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 and to, to fulfill that mission. And I'm the director of City Team in the Neighborhood, and we serve low-income families. And we have these four distinct uh, programs and phases to accomplish that mission. First of all, food insecurity is a big thing in the, in the Bay Area. One in four people are food insecure. That's double the national average. And there are... Our food banks like Second Harvest of Silicon Valley and the Alameda County Food Bank, they are phenomenal at acquiring staggering amounts of food. The challenge is getting that food out of warehouses into kitchens of people that really needs it. That's where we come in. So like in our San Jose warehouse, they drop off food with their semis four times a week. And then we take that to 40 different neighborhoods all over Santa Clara and San Mateo County. Eleven in Alameda County. So the, re the, the only way we can do it is through partnerships. 50 churches are the ones that distribute the food at these 63 um, uh, 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 pantries. And then, but there's some restrictions with uh, government food and we want to honor and respect that. That's why we have our pop-up clothing closet program, bringing clothing uh, household goods and hygiene items. And those are legitimate needs in our community. But that is where we create some on-ramps then to what we call lasting solutions, uh, spiritual and emotional support programs and uh, through vital connections, but can also be a program at the church. It could be Celebrate Recovery, it could be Alpha, whatever a marriage uh, 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 program. But we have to be very intentional because there's different skill set requires to, to meet the immediate needs than to do the lasting solution. So we have to have be very intentional. Otherwise, it just doesn't happen naturally. And then life coaching. Once people's immediate needs are met, their toxic stress lowers and they're in community, in spiritual community, experiencing transformation. They are now primed to be empowered how they can advance economically. Uh, we have a program called Career Connections, and we use empath principles. So to help them discover how God has wired them, how that translates to career paths that's going to get them in, live, in above living wage jobs, and then connect them with mentorship to really help and encourage them to execute their plan over years, many times to really um, be lifted, them and their family, and later whole communities out of poverty. So that is the different steps. And the reason we do this is, is really is we want to see the kingdom come. His will be done in the Bay Area as it is in heaven, bringing the kingdom of God, making it accessible. And so this just gives you an example. These are all just a snapshot of Santa Clara County. And so these are strategic partnerships. These are all the pantries. We have 40 in Santa Clara County, and then 36, I'm uh, wrong number, but 36, these light blue, those are all churches. All churches that some are in their parking lots or some showing up local schools or low-income apartment complexes. Be the ones serving, and we want to make it really easy for them to love on their low-income neighbors. They don't have to worry about food, getting it and transportation and cold storage. We do all of that. They can just focusing on building a relationship, connecting with the people. And then if you want to do a pop-up clothing closet, you need to have a spiritual follow-up team. The reason we have, uh, have this, make these resources available, is to connect relationally. And um, then these are the pop-ups, vital connections. Right now we have 11 vital connections program, six months connecting with God, self, your family, and your community. And transformation is happening there, specifically designed for people that are unchurched or de church Many have never read the Bible, and they would not come to church. So this is a bridge program to get people to say yes to Jesus and spiritual community. And then career connections. So we look at really scaling that. So in the next five years, we're not going to add a ton more pantries. 
It's about adding more color, going deeper, and bringing transformation in these communities. So um, I work with a lot of churches, and this is true at many, not at all of them. But they do a lot of awesome work, outreach. But unfortunately, evangelism only happens when you show up at church on a Sunday morning, and discipleship only when you join a life group. For many, that is a challenge. There are many people that are spiritually open, but they're not going to come to your church. So we need to go to them. We need to connect to them and then create some bridge programs after we establish relationships and trust. Bridge programs where they can say yes. And then after a while, they want to be part of your church and they want to be, uh, uh, they, they're going to join your team. So be very intentional. It's not like the spiritual office is not like wheat. We don't go and harvest all at once. It's like, it's like tomatoes. I grow tomatoes every year. I go pick two, and the rest, the 30 is all green. There's even blossoms on the tree. Doesn't mean like I pick the two t red tomatoes and stop watering. I got to keep watering, keep watering, and then go back and pick. The same thing with the spiritual harvest. We have to regularly create on-ramps. Be That proximity is really, really important. So the key is like having integration. Um, I want to share this story. This is Ana Naranjo. She's a pantry guest at our Milpitas Pantry, which we partner with a Chinese church called Silicon Valley Alliance Church. They do this first and third Saturday morning. They serve their community, and 60% are Hispanic. So Ana comes from a Catholic culture. Anything that is non-Catholic is very suspicious, but she appreciated rain or shine, how this church has welcomed them, served them, and churches are phenomenal at doing that. Then we do these pop-ups, and then she got invited. The first time she said no, the second pop-up, she says yes. She convinced her sister to come with her to Vital Connections. Six-month inductive Bible study that doesn't feel like a Bible study. After about a month, she gave her life to God, over to God. And God started to transform her life. She already had marriage, uh, divorce paper signed. God told her no. She gave her, she reconciled her, 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 her marriage. It would have been absolutely devastating if, if they would got divorced because she's also the primary caretaker. But during COVID, she had an accident. She broke her leg. She fell into depression and things started spiraling out. But God started turning that around. Not only this was at a graduation where both that's her sister, Maria, her family came to cheer her on. But here, they then became involved at serving their community. They invited, this is last Christmas, invited at the Christmas pop-up. It was raining like crazy that day. About 20 households showed up. And here, she is sharing her testimony. Wow. And then her and her sister are now facilitating a Vital Connections group for seven other pantry guests, people. So not only did she become a disciple, she became a disciple maker. And now they have a whole team. And she, it's, it's incredible what God is doing in that community. But it's activating more people from the harvest because they are our best harvesters. So replicating this approach throughout Milpitas. And I think this is an approach that can be replicated. So I started to, um, there's this Milpitas Pastors Network. A group of pastors that have been meeting together for 25 years on a monthly basis. And just encouraging one another. The chief of police as Pastor Dan, he says, you know, I know you guys are doing some great work. Give me a list of all the programs and services that when we come up in, uh, across needs, we'd like to refer them to, to some of the churches. And he was like, oh, how do we do it? And I said, hey, I'll help you. So I created this Google spreadsheet, gave everybody permission to start adding the programs and services open to the public. And what we landed on, there were several, but we landed on 14 programs and services open to the public that's going to be relevant for the police department and also for local schools. And what we found out, there was eight addressing immediate needs. There's five pantries and there's six lasting solutions. Recovery, emotional support, education and parenting. Guess what? Many of those emotion, these lasting solutions had a lot of capacity because people did not know that. And what we did was within, there was this Milpitas Cares website. It was utilized only the three weeks around Easter when they served the, 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 the city. So we made it year round. And we made it, there is, oops, there is need help and give help. Need help, all those services are listed there. So then we created a 
business cards with a QR code. Tom, there's your QR code. Um, and then get that in the hands of the police department and at local schools, but also put posters at these pantries, at these other places where people show up, and they can now creating on-ramps to some of these other lasting solutions. And we're going to keep track now, but I was at a pantry at one of the churches, one of the five, a large pantry, and interviewed some people. And what I found that uh, many immigrants are there, Filipino, uh, Vietnamese, check this out, 70% said they need an ESL program. One of the churches, Christ Community Church, has one of the best ESL programs this side of the Mississippi. 200 to 250 people are at any given moment there. Guess what? 80% of people in that program give their lives to Christ. Wow. They did not know that that program existed. We talk about, you know, there was also overcoming bad habits and addiction. 24% uh, uh, said yes. There's a celebrate recovery meeting happening in that church, literally on the other side of the wall, they did not know that. When we talk about spiritual community, 65% said, after I explained what it is, said, oh, I need that. I need that. Folks, the Bay Area, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The, the people are not anti-God, anti-Jesus. It's, it's just we need to give them opportunities to say yes and relevant opportunities. So... We can't do it alone. And for effective collaboration to take place, and I'm going to close with this, we see that we need collaboration catalysts. And that, Ted, you are one of those. We need some people that are gifted at bringing people together and look at having a goal. And then we also need some, uh, some systems collaboration platforms. So Milpitas Cares, that, that's one that we created. Uh, Geo browsers also creating that, but facilitate some of these integration of services, and we need to make that known and then start working together and, and, and leverage that. We need to leverage existing opportunities. Asset mapping. What are we doing creating on-ramps to, to, to that? People don't want to start new programs. It's like, hey, it's not about starting new programs. What are you already doing that can be leveraged? There's some untapped potential to leverage that. And then learning communities where we share best practices, we encourage one another, we provide some training, and then also replicate programs. And the last thing is combine our resources to activate more diverse disciple makers. That, Spanish, uh, that, that Asian church, they did not have Spanish speakers. So we provide them with Spanish-speaking follow-up team that are now meeting at their church. There's a, congre a, a, congre a Spanish congregation being birthed in a Chinese congre in a Chinese church. And that is the diversity and the sharing that needs to take place because it takes multiple groups to, uh, to, to really reach a whole community. So what is one program or service at your organization that has untapped potential? What is one what you may, you may need some outside help or you may need to look at this can be leveraged for that, but right now it's kind of siloed. So think about that and what are the next steps you will take to address that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Excellent. Wonderful. What I love out of this presentation is I see the common theme of shifting the way we look at the people we provide services for. I love that poll, and you took that, you listened to the people, and then they're part of the solution. Yeah. And if we can make that shift, it's like, wow, the magnitude of the problem suddenly gets changed. It's like judo, you know, like a judo player who's really talented. They're going up against me, and they go, he's good at basketball, but they're loving it because he's so heavy, I'm going to use his weight on him. And it's like, if we can do that, wow, the workforce is out there and we can turn them around and empower them. And I love the way you guys are empowering the, uh, you know, the community you're serving. It's critical. We need to plant the gospel where people live and learn. Instead of extracting them out of that to come become Christians in our churches, we need, they need to be the examples. And these pantries, these are just beachheads into communities that you get to interact with people twice a month. That's many of the most members come to your church, twice a month we get to interact with them in meaningful ways uh, in communities that would never come to us. So we need to go to them and even plant the gospel there. All right. Thank you so much.